Okay, in this demo we're going to be showing you a new feature of Relight. It's a feature which allows you to essentially use Relight as a graphical user interface on top of Mental Ray. That is to say, what it allows you to do is to load a Mental Ray scene into Relight, play with the materials, create light sources, move light sources around, render, save your changes to disk, etc. The big difference being that we're no, lo no longer using Relight's built-in Ray's renderer to do the rendering, but we're using Mental Ray itself. So, what we're doing here is we're loading a scene, a mental ray scene, into Relight. It's a scene containing a car. And the first thing you'll notice is that the user interface looks exactly the same as it would for any Relight scene. We've got all, all our light sources, shaders, materials, geometry, etc. The big difference being that the objects which constitute our scene are special mental ray objects. And if we go into the render view and render, you'll see that it's actual, actually mental ray doing the work. So that's our image generated by Mental Ray. Now we can use the user interface of Relight to modify our scene the exact, exactly the same way we would with a normal Relight scene. So if we go into the, into the 3D viewer, this is our scene. We'll hide this dome, which is used for uh, environment mapping. And there was, there's our car. So what can we do in the 3D viewer? We can, uh, we can grab a wheel, for example, and translate it. And if we go back into the render view, select a region of interest and re-render that region of interest, Mental Ray uh, regenerates an image with that change. Similarly, we can go into the spreadsheet and play with our materials, shaders, uh, tweak them the way we could the, tweak the attributes of any relight scene. The difference is that if you look at all the attributes which are available, they correspond exactly one for w one for one to the attributes which you would find in a, in a mental ray file into uh, to, to, to that shader's attributes. So here what we're doing is we're playing with the, um, the color and the ambient color of the wheel. We re-render that region of interest again and you can see uh, mental ray has taken our changes into account. Uh, what else can we do here? We can um, play with any of the attributes of, of our shaders, say the um, uh, the transparency of the uh, of the windshield will make the windshield completely transparent. Select a new region of interest, re-render, and we've got a, a transparent windshield. Now we can also use the 3D viewer to um, to adjust our light sources. So let's grab a light source, a spotlight, a mental ray spotlight. We can uh, click on the shader the spotlight shader corresponding to that light uh, and play with uh, all its attributes, say that we'll take the color and modify the color of the light source, make it a little, a little bluish, re-render the whole scene. There you go. We can also use the, uh, the 3D viewer to move light sources around. Here what we're going to do is to move the light source rotated about its uh, aim point and again we'll re-render using mental ray. Mm -hmm. Let's say we're satisfied with that. Once we're done tweaking our lights and our materials, we save the scene to a new mental ray file. Mm 